Yang. He received his PhD from Penn State this summer, where he worked with his advisor, Dr. Mahmoud Kandimir, and Dr. Chita Das on high performance computing and advanced computer architectures. He will be joining University of Pittsburgh as an assistant professor in the coming fall. So let's welcome our first speaker. Uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Xi Long Tang from Penn State. Today I'm going to present work from our group, Co-Optimizing Memory Level Parallelism and Cache Level Parallelism. So today we're having a lot of data intensive applications from different different application domains. For example, both the training and inference phase in the deep learning neural networks and the large scale data analytics, uh, real time audio or video processing, and also virtual reality and gaming. So most of these applications are both performance and quality of service demanding. So they are paralyzed on many core platforms for acceleration purpose. So however, the delivered performance of these applications rarely keeps up with the increasing of the degree of the parallelism. So one reason behind is the cost of data accesses dominate the execution time of most of parallel applications on many core platforms. So this cost of data access actually can cost can lead to several consequences. Uh, for example, the non-uniform and long data access latency, underutilization of the compute, uh, computation resources, like idleness of the cores, and also contention on the on-chip network due to massive on-chip network data movement. So traditionally, people reduce the data access latency or improve data access performance through data locality optimizations or cache locality optimizations. There is, exists uh, substantial research works in prior, prior PLD and other conferences try to improve this data locality. However, the emerging applications are now processing en enormous amounts of data. Uh, on the other hand, increasing the cache capacity are lagging far behind increasing the application data volume. So this ever-growing uh, input data set of applications and slow-growing uh, cache capacity leads to a gap and leads to the f between the uh, capacity and data volume, and also leads to the fact that caches nowadays are becoming unable to maintain the application data sets. Even uh, through beta locality optimizations, we try to aggressively minimize the cache misses here. So therefore, in addition to this cache miss minimization or data locality optimizations, another complementary approach is to embrace the data access misses in the cache and then reduce the latency experienced by these cache misses. So <clears throat> One option is basically through data access parallelism. So we talk about computation parallelism a lot, which, for example, the loop iteration level parallelism. So let me use this green circle to represent the computation node and the yellow circle to represent the data locations. So in computation parallelism, the computation are balanced out across different computation nodes, and they execute in parallel. However, the problem or potential problem in this execution paradigm is that in a short time period of execution, a significant request might go into the same data location and cause contention there and cause the request queued up there, so the data access latency is extended. So on the other hand, the data access paradigm basically means that uh, the requests are going to different, different data locations in the short time period of execution. So all these data locations are serving this data request or feeding the data to the computation in parallel. So the idea or the best execution parameter would be computation parallelism plus data access parallelism, which is shown in the last figure uh, in the bottom of this slice. So, at this point, I want to give the uh, execute summary of the paper and this, uh, of the paper or this work. So we're motivated by the fact that the end-to-end -end data access performance actually is very important. It plays an important role in shaping the overall perf performance of the application on many core platforms. So while traditional data locality optimization are important and they, to some extent, uh, improve the data locality and reduce the data access latency there, but because but their effectiveness is limited by the increasing gap between cache capacity and the application input data volume. So it is important to reduce the latency experienced by the cache misses through data access parallelism. So to this end, our proposal in this paper is a software approach to co-optimize the cache level parallelism 
for the local cache misses or the last level cache hits, and the memory level parallelism for the last level cache misses, which is the main memory request. So let's, to be more concrete, so when we see memory level parallelism, we mean the parallelism among the different, different memory banks, and uh, which is the path labeled in, uh, as A in this figure. So memory bank level parallelism means that there are, so memory is organized into different banks, means that multiple different banks are serving the memory request in parallel, when at least there is one bank serving outstanding memory request. So similarly, for the cache bank level parallelism, which means uh, it basically means the uh, uh, data access misses the local cache, so they are forwarded to the different different last level cache banks, and we want as many as banks being accessed in a short time period of execution. So let me use an example to illustrate the high level uh, idea of our motivation here. Suppose we got two cores, and I'm using the circle here to represent the data element or the data request. So together with the arrow in this figure, figure, it forms the access pattern. So it goes horizontal and it goes next to the line. And suppose that each cache line comprises of four data elements here. So the first one, first access to the cache line will be a miss. That is a code miss to the cache. And then this cache line is brought into the cache. So subsequent three access, are, which are the yellow circles here, are basically cache hits. So as you can see, in this access pattern is very good from the data locality perspective because once the cache is loading into the once the cache line is loading into the cache, all the subsequent three access to the cache line will be cache hits. However, it is not good or not optimized for memory bank level parallelism. This is because every four accesses there, there is only one miss and going to just one memory bank. So the other banks are leaving idle here. So prior research showed that the way to improve memory, memory level parallelism is through clustering the misses. So through loop permutation, we can change the access pattern of the data. So well, after permutation, the access pattern is showing in this figure. So it changes from horizontal accesses going to vertical. So now the four misses of the cache line are being clustered together. Think if these four misses are going to different banks, so we got some memory level, bank level parallelism across these four different accesses here. However, the problem here is that although it has a good parallelism for the memory bank accesses, but it has a poor data locality because think about if the cache can only hold two cache lines. When you go back to the second column of your access, that cache line might be already kicked out from the cache. So you might experience more cache misses here. So the way to get the data locality back is through loop strip mining. So basically we partition into two parts and in this case we get both good memory level parallelism and good data locality. So this is suggested by previous research uh, already. So now we talk about the misses. Basically we focus on the right circles of this figure. So can we do a better job by thinking what can we do for these yellow circles as well? So given the fact that in the static and new, new, new memory core architecture, the last level cache banks are partitioned and aligned to different, different nodes based on the address. So we want to optimize the cache bank level parallelism for the yellow circles, which are the last level cache, missed, uh, last level cache hits. So here I want to emphasize our goal. So our goal in this paper is to co-optimize or optimize both the parallelism for local cache misses, or which are the last level cache hits through the cache bank level parallelism, and uh, also optimize last level cache misses through the memory bank level parallelism. So to achieve this goal, there are several challenges here. First, loop iteration, stream money, and permutation are required is just like what I discussed in the motivation example, which clusters misses and changes the access in order. However, it might not be enough. For example, what if after your permutation and stream mining, the back-to-back -back access are, or the back-to-back -back cache lines are still residing in the same memory bank and same cache bank. So you don't e increase the memory bank parallelism and the cache bank parallelism in this situation. Therefore, in addition to strip mining and permutation, there needs another approach which we call loop, strip, uh, loop iteration clustering or scheduling to cluster the the accesses to different different cache lines to make sure that the cluster misses are going to different memory banks and the cluster cache hits are going to different cache banks. And the second challenge here is that co-optimizing this memory level parallelism and cache level parallelism through this um, 
loop iteration scheduling is difficult sometimes because when you optimize one, it will affect the other one because all the four data, the misses and the hits are in the same cache line. We're not doing data layout transformation. We're just uh, reorganizing the computation such that the access pattern is changed here. Therefore, in the paper, we propose three approaches. The first one we call the MLP first, which means that we always focus on optimizing memory level parallelism. Only the results or the scheduling gives us the same degree of the memory level parallelism. We consider cache level parallelism as a complementary optimization. So in CLP first, it's the other way around. And we also strike a balance between these this two uh, optimization during execution. Basically, for different ap execution phases, we choose between MLP first or CLP first. So I will dive into details of these three schemes. So to understand the proposal, let me go through one example here. Uh, suppose, again, we got two cores and four memory banks and four last level cache banks here. And I'm using the number or the pair of numbers on top of the miss, which is the right circle in the figure, to represent the memory bank ID as the first number in the pair and uh, the cache bank ID as the second number in the pair. So with this, with this information given in hand, now we can calculate, first we can calculate the intro call, basically within the call, what is the degree of MLP, which is memory level parallelism, and what is the degree of the CLP, which is cache level parallelism. So starting from the first four cluster misses. As you can see that the first three accesses or first three cache lines reside in the memory bank two, which is labeled as number two there. And the last cache line is in the bank one. So in total, these four accesses or misses are going to two different memory banks. So the memory bank level parallelism for call zero at first phase is two. That's why we have the MAP call zero equals two at the first number. And in the second phase, which is the second four cluster misses here, it access three banks, which is three, two, one. So the MLP call zero, the second number is basically three there. And similarly, we can calculate for cache um, level parallelism, CLP for call zero. So to calculate CLP, we now focus on the second number in the pair. And you, you can see the first, uh, the the yellow um, the yellow circles in the first uh, in the in the first uh, two cache lines are in the last level cache bank three, and the third is in bank two, last one is in bank one. So the total uh, CLP for call zero at this stage is basically three. And similarly, we can calculate for the uh, rest of four cache lines in the next execution phase. So with all this, so basically we do this, we do we do this calculation for all the misses and hits here, and we can calculate the average by adding them together and divide the total number. So we have the MLP number as 2.25 and CLP number as three here. And the, this is intro call, basically calculating within a call what is the access pattern or what is the degree of MLP and CLP. So we, can, we should also look at the inter call because once the cores are executed in parallel, their request might reach the corresponding memory bank or cache bank concurrently at the same time. So for intercall, if we look at the phase T0 or T0 here, there are eight misses together. So we calculate this ML T0 as three because it access three banks only. So similarly, we can do for ML T for T2 because there are misses. And for T1, T3, we calculate CLP because there are cache hits. And uh, this, so just now we talk about the default uh, execution. So now if through this uh, loop iteration scheduling, if we just focus on MLP only, so we don't consider cache level parallelism, we reorganize the loop iteration such that, such that the access pattern is changed here. So with this new access pattern here, when we calculate the MLP value improved, but the CLP value is not good. So in the MLP first, which is our proposed technique there, we consider CLP as a complementary approach. So you, let me put all of the data here together. So as you can see that in MLP first, it achieves the same degree of memory level parallelism with the MLP only, but it has a significantly improved CLP as well. So in this case, basically we, we optimize the memory level parallelism and as well as the CLP here. So to formalize the problem, we need to define four concepts here. 
so the first one we call the ah iteration block and second one we call iteration window and then data block and data set so we got n calls here and i'm using this blue rectangle to represent iteration block iteration block is basically a subset of the loop iterations is a sub loop you can you can think it's a sub loop or just a couple of iteration of a loop nest and the iteration window basically captures the iteration blocks executed concurrently across all cores and because and we assume all the iteration blocks across this course within the iteration window they are executed in parallel so we can calculate the mlp and about uh, clp within this iteration window so each iteration block will execute each uh, loop iteration and it will access some data so we call the data block is basically the cache line granularity in the target architecture for example if the cache line has 40 elements here the data block size is 4 here and we call data set basically is uh, the set of data blocks accessed by the iteration by an iteration block here so for example if that blue rectangle access two cache lines so the data set of that iteration block is two cache lines or two data blocks here so with this four concept in hand it takes five steps to generate the optimized loop iteration scheduling with optimized mlp and clp value here so first we need to determine the size of iteration block and iteration window basically how many iteration should be included in the iteration block so this is a trade-off between the data locality as well as the, the uh, scheduling flexibility and load balancing so second we perform this loop strip mining to using the size we get from the iteration block and iteration window for example if we got the two level nested loop we rewrite it into four level but with the boundaries having the information of iteration block size and iteration window size so third we use the miss uh, cache miss equations to estimate whether the access in the iteration block are going to be last level cache hits or last level cache misses because for misses we look at memory bank parallelism for hits we look at cache bank parallelism then we use the bank vector to indicate the set of access the cache banks and memory banks of each iteration block then with this information now we schedule the iteration block across different different cores and form the iteration window to make sure that this iteration block are touching as many as memory banks in parallel as as, as many as cache banks in parallel and the, the last step is loop permutation basically which is clustering the misses and hits together so the parallelism is achieved there so uh, this gives a detailed uh, configuration of the simulation uh, simulator we, we use to evaluate. And in the paper, we also have uh, evaluated approach on the uh, commercial uh, Intel Xeon 5 coprocessor. And uh, for basically try to get more details of like the number of MLP, number of CLP, we also run our ex experiment on the simulator. So come to the uh, results across these 12 applications. Um, in a 32 memory bank configuration with our MLP first optimization the average MLP is, uh, is uh, 23.4 and uh, in the CLP optimization results uh, it is 14.6 and uh, with a balanced approach it is 19.8 uh, so as you can see in this results even with CLP first it is better the results performs better than just clustering which is just a stream mining plus permutation this is because in CLP first we also consider MMP as a complementary approach if the CLP is ma maximized there and this improvement in the memory lab parallelism of the cache level transfer translate to the performance showing in this figure and um, uh, with the MLP first approach it improves 11.3 of percent of performance and CLP first gives 9.4 percent improvement and with balanced we achieve 17.3 performance improvement and uh, for more results like how we handle dependence the loop carry dependencies and how we perform the balancing and the detailed example about code generation and how the code transformation happens you can find all these details and discussion in the paper so come to conclusion so we motivated by the fact that data access latency is very important and uh, one way to reduce latency is through optimization of the data access parallelism so targeting this we propose three strategies which is memory level parallelism first cache level parallelism first and then a balance basically tries to striking a balance between MMP and CLP for different iteration window so experiment results shows the improvement in this data access parallelism as well as the application performance uh, so with that I would like happy to take any questions thank you
Asif T. Dresden. Uh, nice talk. I just have one question. So you are kind of disturbing the special locality. So how does that affect the robe of our hit rate? Uh, you're saying to uh, basically for the robe buffer. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, in the paper, we got a paragraph discussing about this thing. But shot here, in shot here, uh, we're we're not trying to optimize or disturbing the row buffer locality. You know, op open row policy, once the row is latched there, and we're not hurting the row buffer locality. So basically, the permutation, we're trying to improve the bank line parallelism, basically means that once you have the address, it does not need to wait for every pre-charge and active there, but it does not hurt the row buffer locality. So as far as I understand. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's thank Xu Tong again for the nice talk.